All right, everyone, we're super excited to have you with us this afternoon. Um, always love partnering with the Center for Child and Family Wellbeing here at the University of Washington. And Helica Zabata um, is going to have a great hour workshop here with us on mindfulness and self-compassion practices. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let you take it away. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Thank you, Anna. Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Angelica Zapata. I'm an education specialist at the mindfulness uh, and a mindfulness facilitator at the Center for Child and Family Wellbeing, CCFW. I'm part of the community programs team, and our goal is to support the well-being of providers and professionals working with children, youth, and families. I am completely passionate about mindfulness and compassion. I think that as a single working mom of two children, Mindfulness and self-compassion practices have been my go-to strategies to cope with all the stress and difficulties in my life, especially during this pandemic. So I'm very, very excited to be here today, sharing about mindfulness and self-compassion, as well as the resources uh, CCFW offers to the community. Um, let me just, next slide, very quickly. Okay. So this is our agenda for today's session. Uh, first, I'm going to give you an introduction to the Center for Child and Family Wellbeing, CFW. And then um, we're gonna define mindfulness and its benefits. And then we're gonna have a short practice, it's called the stress check. Then we're gonna define self-compassion and move into a practice, it's called the self-compassion break. And the last part of my session today is going to be about CCFW's resources to stay connected. Okay, so, um, so CCFW's mission is to transform innovative research in child and family well-being into practical solutions to ensure all children, youth, and families are resilient and thriving. Our areas of focus are child and youth well-being and resilience supporting parent well-being and effective parenting practices, understanding the effects of adversity and inequity to reduce their impact on children, and last but not least, understanding how mindfulness and self-compassion and compassion and self-compassion strengthens the well-being of youth, families, and professionals. These are our main programs. So, uh, New Moms is a study that compares the effects of addressing mom's well-being during the perinatal period. It really aims to strengthen emotional well-being and effective parenting skills in low-income new moms. Then we have our CCAP program. CCAP stands for Social, Emotional, and Academic Success of Children and Parents. This is a six-week program, and it promotes young children's ability to self-regulate through parenting strategies that contribute to children's positive development. And this is our Be Real program. So there are two versions of the Real program, Be Real and Real Pro. Real stands for Resilient Attitudes and Living. So first, our Be Real program um, is the one I really want to highlight. This is a six-week program, and this one provides students with cognitive behavior skills to manage their emotions. We also introduce mindfulness skills to strengthen students' self-awareness, and we share practices that promote compassion for themselves and for others. The second version is Real Pro, and this is the same Real program, but this is an this is an eight-week program, and we share um, a blend of mindfulness, of compassion, and dialectical behavior skills with providers working with children and families. So we work with many early childcare providers, Head Start, home visiting, and partners that work with the youth. Um, currently, we're evaluating Real Pro, and so far it has been found to significantly improve emotion coping skills and also decrease symptoms of indirect trauma. Okay, let's talk about mindfulness now. At CCFW, we define mindfulness as the awareness of the present moment with a kind and open attitude. But mindfulness is a practice um, that help us learn to check in with ourselves and our experiences and others in our lives. 
we can practice mindfulness by anchoring ourselves in something and staying in the moment with it as long as possible. So mindfulness practices lead to a greater understanding of ourselves and our, our automatic reactions by expanding our window of tolerance so we can choose how to respond instead of being on autopilot. Developing mindfulness is like any other skill. It takes practice. And we, and we may not notice results right away, but if we keep practicing, like anything else, right, we'll begin to notice the effects in our lives. Okay. Um, today, I'd like to share a practice called the stress check. Many of you probably already know what the body scan is. This is similar. This is a similar practice, and it's going to allow us allow us to um, check with um, ourselves and notice where there's tension or any other sensation. Um, these help us build focus uh, by shifting our awareness throughout the body. And over time, this is going to increase our capacity to sustain focus. So if you're ready, um, let's practice. Are we ready? Are we good? OK. All right, so let's start by taking a comfortable position, sitting or laying down. If you're in a chair, place both feet on the ground. Rest your hands anywhere on your lap. Allow your gaze to be soft. Perhaps focus on the ground a few feet in front of you, or if you can close your eyes, that's okay too. Whatever feels comfortable right now for you. Now take a moment to connect with your breath. Notice the movement of the breath in and out of the body. In this practice will move awareness throughout the body to explore any sensations, such as tingling, pressure, warmth, coldness. We're not trying to change anything, but simply tune into what's already present. Bring awareness to how you are supported in your position. Notice places where you're making contact with the chair or other surface beneath you. Now check in with your body as a whole. Tune into places where the body expands when you're breathing in, and places where the body softens when you exhale. Next, check in with your mind. Is there a lot of activity? The box circulating? Or is your mind more still? Notice without any judgment what's present for you.
Now bring awareness to your breath. Notice the movement of the breath in and out of the body. See if you can tune into places where the body expands when you inhale and softens when you exhale. As we move through this practice, invite a sense of curiosity into each moment. Imagine it's the first time you have ever intentionally brought awareness to your body or your breath. Now narrow your awareness and bring your attention to your head. Notice any sensations on the top or the back of the head or on the side of the head by the ear. Notice if there are any sensations around the forehead or your eyes. See what sensations there are around your nose, your cheeks, your jaw. There might not be any sensations today, which is normal. Just know that there isn't any sensation at the moment. Now shift your awareness to your neck and notice the sensations there. At some point, your mind may become distracted by thoughts. And when this happens, just kindly remind yourself that this is the mind's tendency. And then gently bring your awareness back to the practice. And after your next exhale, move your awareness down to your shoulders. Do you feel any tightness or ease in the muscles here? This is a place where many of us hold tension. Tune into what's present for you in this moment. Now guide your awareness down to your arms. First notice your right arm. How is it supported? Is your right hand open or closed? Are there any sensations in the arm or in the palm 
or your fingers. Now turn your awareness to your left arm. How is it supported? Is the left hand open or closed? Are there any other sensations in this arm or in your palm or in your fingers? Next, bring your awareness to your back. Tune into any sensations in the upper back, such as tension or ease or anything else you may notice. Then guide your awareness down to the lower back. Taking note of any sensations here. Is there comfort? Discomfort? Other sensations? Remember that we're not trying to change anything. Simply notice what's present in this moment. Now shift your awareness to the front part of your body. Bring awareness to your chest. Notice any sensations here, including the movement of your chest as you breathe in and out. Which direction can you feel the chest expand when you breathe in? Side to side, front to back. Now move your awareness down to your abdomen. Tune into any sensations here. Again, notice any movement while you breathe or any other sensations you might feel. See if you can notice the sensation of the abdomen moving up or down when you breathe. Can you tune into where it is expanding and softening? Next, shift your awareness to your legs. Notice how the upper legs are supported in your position. Then note any sensations on the tops or backs of your legs. Now bring your awareness to your lower legs and into any sensations here around the calves and the shins. Notice if the muscles are relaxed or active.
And now shift awareness to your ankles and feet. Notice anything you feel here. Finally, expand your awareness to the entire body. When you inhale, notice how the breath moves in and expands the body. When you exhale, notice how the breath moves out and allows the body to soften. Now turn your awareness to the breath's complete wave-like movement in and out of the body. Take a couple of breaths at your own pace now and allow yourself to be fully present with the breath's movement. Before you return your awareness to the space around you, take a slow breath in through the nose and out through your mouth. And now offer yourself a moment of gratitude for taking this time today to cultivate mindfulness. And when you're ready, open your eyes and come back to the Zoom room. Are we all back now? <laughs> How was the practice? Anna, did you enjoy it? <laughs> I thought it was great. It always brings my heart rate down so much more than just my typical resting state. I feel like even more. Um, I, I strive to be able to replicate it for myself. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Anyone else want to share? You can also send in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Popcorn style, anybody? Anyone wants to share? Any comments in the chat box? <laughs> this is very restful. It felt very restful for a Friday, much more peaceful and relaxed. Nice. Very nice. So the audio recording of this practice is available um, in our website in English and Spanish. And you can also access it on SoundCloud and I'll share the link shortly, okay? Someone just commented they almost fell asleep. <laughs> that happens, that is your body giving you a message. You need to rest. Very nice. Any more comments? That's about it for now. Good kudos for you though. People really seem to enjoy it and we'll definitely use those links too. Yeah, good, yes, towards the end, we'll do that. Okay, so now let's talk about a favorite topic, which is self-compassion. And um, I'd like to hear if anybody can give me um, their own definition of self-compassion. I already have one <laughs> from my slide, but if anybody wants to share, that's okay. Um, the way we have it defined at CCFW, it's uh, pretty much caring for ourselves the same way that we would care for a friend during a difficult time. So when we're kind to ourselves, we truly create space for our own emotions and experiences. And this is gonna allow us to work through difficult situations more easily. And that's why we 
cultivate my, uh, my self-compassion, mindfulness and self-compassion, uh, because it's like any other skill. Now, self-compassion has three elements. Number one, mindfulness. As we just learned, mindfulness is being aware of our emotions with an open and curious attitude. Um, so here we acknowledge the difficulty we're having without judging it. So that's the key. We're open and curious to whatever the experience is bringing us. Um, and we recognize it, we acknowledge it without judging if it's good or bad. Second element in self-compassion is recognizing our common humanity. So we accept that we're not alone. Everyone makes mistakes. And mistakes are actually part of being a human being. And number three is extending kindness to ourselves. So this component is extremely important. Uh, here is where we learn to treat ourselves as we would treat a friend. So we would ask ourselves, what do I need to hear? What kind of support do I need? Um, here we use anchor phrases such as mantras or slogans that are meaningful to us and remind us to extend kindness to ourselves. It's um, very interesting how uh, it's so much easier for us to extend compassion and kindness to others. And personally, I didn't know what, what self-compassion was until um, I learned to start treating myself the way I treat my children. And um, I never did before, but when I started my training in compassion and self-compassion, I realized that that's it. And so um, I like to now do a practice and it's called the self-compassion break. It has three parts as well. Um, this practice is amazing. It can, this, this practice can help us navigate stressful times and overwhelming emotions. And it has the three aspects, again, of self-compassion of self that we just learned. Um, this practice is my go-to practice. <laughs> it can be used in a moment when we're experiencing our critical inner voice, right? Um, or we're having a hard time with something in our lives. Um, we can acknowledge that and address it in this practice. If you're ready to try it with me, we'll start now. Everything in mindfulness is an invitation. So always do what makes you comfortable. You can turn off your cameras, get really, really comfortable. Um, you can lower your gaze or close your eyes and just allow yourself to feel the natural rhythm of your breath. Just letting it flow. And now I'd like for you to bring to mind a challenging situation in your life right now. Perhaps it's something that you're being too hard on yourself about. Maybe you didn't respond to a person or a situation in a way that you're pleased with. There could be feelings of, of um, overwhelm or hurt, dismay. Allow yourself to imagine this problem. Feeling how it feels to remember this thing that is hard for you.
Or do you feel it the most? When you begin to feel the hard feelings, you can say to yourself, this is hard. You're being present in the midst of a difficulty. And that is mindfulness. You could also say to yourself right now, hold on, I need a moment to collect myself. Or you may say, ouch, this hurts. Or this is stressful. Now take a moment to reflect on how, just like you, other people might be experiencing similar challenges. This is our common humanity. You can say to yourself, hmm, experiencing pain is part of being human. Other ways to say this might be, I'm not the only one. We all struggle in our lives. I really feel this now. Next, you can try placing your hand over some place comfortable on your body, like your heart, or together resting in your lap. And gently say to yourself, may I be kind to myself. That is self-kindness. Other ways to say this are, I got this. I accept myself as I am. May I show up with love. If you're having a hard time finding the right words, imagine a dear friend or a loved one who's having the same problem as you. What would you say to this person?
What message would you give them? Now, can you offer the same message to yourself? Now notice how you're feeling right now. If that's not comforting, return to focusing on the natural rhythm of your breath. You have already done more than enough. And when you're ready, slowly lift your gaze or gently open your eyes and come back to the Zoom room. How was the practice? <laughs> Do we have anyone who wants to share their reflections or their experience with the self-compassion break? A comment in the chat says it was great. Very nice. I did all that. It's hard, says Barbara. Yeah, I know. I know. I really yeah. like this idea to take a break for self-compassion, but find it difficult to concentrate. It's one of the comments. All mindfulness practices say the mind tends to go in so many directions. And with all the distractions we're having, um, working remotely or even just carving out the time for practice, um, there's a lot of distractions. And so if you're new to mindfulness, keep trying, don't get discouraged or upset. If you're, that's the tendency of the mind to go and start wondering, just bring it back to the breath and just continue building the muscle of you know, concentration. One more comment says, it's a welcome reminder that it's okay to take care of myself. Yeah, yeah. Very important. How do we extend compassion to others when we don't do it to ourselves? So we need to start with ourselves. I left the slide up uh, with the three parts of it because many people try to jump into meta practice or practices or um, loving kindness practices, but we're skipping the common humanity part, which I think it's very, very, very important. You know, we're not the only ones going through all of this. <laughs> Everyone, everyone makes mistakes. So it's a, it's a vacation. <laughs> Dr. Lin says, uh, mindfulness is a vacation from self-improvement. So we're not trying to change anything or improve anything. It's just accepting what's already present. Okay, we'll, we'll get more qu questions and comments towards the end. I hope you all enjoyed this um, second practice, the audio of this um, recording, the audio recording of this practice um, is also available um, in our website and uh, you can also access it um, on SunCloud and I'll share those links at the end. Okay, so to wrap up today's session, I'd like to share about our resources page. So. This is ccfw.uw.edu slash resources. Uh, and I can, let me type it in the chat box. Yeah. 
Mm. Just throw in the chat too for everyone. We can make these slides available if you want to reference back to any of the slides. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> All right. So I can I can type that uh, link in for you too. Oh yes. Thank you so much. Okay. So um, at TCFW, we offer six to eight weeks programs. They're open to the public with sliding scale fees and scholarships available. Uh, we also hold weekly free drop-in mindfulness sessions in English and Spanish, and these are open to the public as well. Um, we also have free handouts of these practices that you can download and share with your families. Um, and what else? So we have the, yeah, these are all the events, um, the events. These are all these resources we have uh, in our website. You can go to events and register for the drop-in sessions. Um, next week, I'll be offering one in Spanish at 6 p.m. Um, and the registration is still open. So just go to our website and um, join us for all of these beautiful mindfulness practices that are so beneficial for mental health and, <laughs> and well-being. Thank you so much for having me. I don't know if we have any more questions. I wanted to leave some room for, for that as well. Any reflections or questions, specific questions about, um, about CCW or the practices themselves or mindfulness, anything that you want to share with us? Do you get referrals sometimes from, um, you know, like if a, a parent is raising a child and there might be some difficulties with communications and things like that, uh, do you get referrals from uh, like pedi pediatricians or how, how do you get those types of referrals in? So we actually do not offer any kind of one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one sessions with anybody. We don't really do therapy or, or any kind of sessions with, with families. We have classes, we offer classes and lectures and um, mindfulness sessions mainly. Okay, thank you. Looks like there may not be other questions. Um, you can always reach out to the whole you or to Angelica via email. I'm sure she'd be happy to answer any other questions that come up. Um, so far, just lots of kudos for you. So thank you so much for walking us through those two practices. And I think we all kind of needed that this week. I, I've been hearing from a lot of people that it's been a crazy week with our short week. So with that, I hope you guys all have a great afternoon. Um, and we're just, we're so happy to have you with us. We, we love the CCFW and everything you provide for our community. So kudos to you guys. And we're excited to tap into those um, resources as well. For those of you who are still with us, we can be sure to share um, the slides via email with you as well as some links there. Um, and as Angelica mentioned, they have lots of recordings you can access so we can all do this on our own when we need it, which is super great. All righty, everyone. I hope you have a great Thank afternoon. Thank you, Anna, for inviting me. <laughs> of course. Happy to have you. It was wonderful to be with you. <laughs>